Hi, and welcome to Game Creation. So this is our final video for this week. I said this will probably be a two-week project, and it definitely will. Um, but actually, we've made it look more like a game. Um, the only thing we're missing, really, uh, which we could cover today, is the players' missiles and shooting them. And then next week, what we're going to be doing is drawing the lines uh, on, behind the missiles, because that's a big thing of this game. Like that was that was what made it look. Um, a little bit more advanced than the previous games where you just had individual sprites moving about having those lines like the vectors kind of uh it just made it look uh like missile command rather than just some of the knockoffs um so we're gonna uh do that next week if you've got ideas or suggestions or thoughts about how we will do that um please let me know um, I was considering just having a tiny little pixel sprite um, and just have that created behind the missile, just have loads of them created as a trail, and that would be a really valid way of doing it. You'll probably hit your maximum um, limit on uh, actives, so you'd probably need to move that up, which you can do in Click Team. <laughs> and I've hit that limit quite a few times. Um, there's other things, I think the physics engine has um, some ways of doing trails and stuff as well. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to introduce a, a brand new object that you would never have thought of to use in a game. And it's very similar to the JavaScript videos. In fact, it uses the same name. I've probably given it away. Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, today we're going to be doing the player, com the player missiles. And it's going to be more or less the same way as we've done the enemy ones. So I'm going to hopefully rush through this quite quickly. Because we've had some long videos this week. So let's get started. Okay, so we've opened up the same projects we've been using throughout the week, and um, what we want to do is just have missiles come out. When you click, to have a missile come out, uh, and hopefully it's not going to be too difficult. Um, now the setup is we want to actually have the same alterable value, so I'm just going to copy that, and this is the player missile here, so we're just going to pretty much have the same ones, so just copy and paste job. Um, so it's target X, target Y, because they're doing basically the same thing. They're moving from one position to another. And hopefully we can, no, I didn't end up using the index. I'm just worried that I might. Um, I do have some ideas where we won't need to use the index at all, uh, which would be nice. Uh, what is it? Current X, isn't it? Current X, and then the angle. So current X, current Y, and then finally the angle. Cool. Right, so the setup's done. Um, so what I want to do is essentially just want to copy this across. So user has clicked. When the user clicks, we then need to get started with uh, creating missile. So we want to do this event here. Um, so there's quite a lot of stuff here. So we'll need another counter to keep track of. So I'm just going to clone that to keep track of the player's uh, missiles. Right. Um, so probably want to do all of that, but to the player's ones. Um, the target will be different, so let's start editing this. So the um, start X won't be, so we need to sort that out. I'm just going to put that at zero for now. We're going to have them all, actually no, not zero. Uh, what's the height of this project? No idea. Have them all come in from the bottom. Uh, so 1109 and by 1000, so it would be 1000. We have it coming from the bottom of the screen. So start Y, let's put it as a thousand, uh, and then the X zero, it's fine. Um, now the target, target X would just be where the mouse is. So that's where it needs to go. And then the target Y would just be the Y coordinates of the mouse. It's the biggest change, isn't it? The index will be the value of count, is it counter 2, I'd assume, yeah. Index of counter 2. 
and the current x will be the start x of the player missile. And then the current y. And this is the danger of copy and pasting, is you're almost certain to, to miss one. I think I've got them all. Okay. Um, so I've created, or oh, I haven't created the missile. See, I've done all that stuff and I haven't created the missile, so I need to actually create the goody missile, which is player missile. Again, we'll put that out of the screen. And then we just move that up here. So we don't want to do any of, don't want to set the X and the Y or anything. It, uh, yeah, so it, when when you do this, it won't do any of this if it hasn't been created. I don't. I think it does the, does it to all the player missile objects that are on screen. But when you create it, it as Click Team Smart, it knows that if you create something, you just want it done to that. So just make sure you create it and then start adding values to it. Uh, right. We don't need to worry about the target position, but we do need to add one onto the counter afterwards in case we need that index file. Okay. What I'm going to do is just copy that paste it there, drag this across, but we're going to have to change an awful lot here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just get the wording, player missile, just copy that. I'm going to have to go through this. In fact, if I double click it, it might be easier for doing it in here because you can just double click them and just manually change them all. Simple as that. Uh, I don't know whether we should have enemy speed, whether we should have a different one for player speed. Uh, I think we probably should. So I'm. I don't know. What, I don't know whether the player one increases. But anyway, let's try it. Okay, it's gone from the top left. I don't know why. Um, start Y. Ah, there we go. Because I'm a moron. Start Y. There we go. Let's see if this works. There we go. Cool. So I shoot and they, they come out and all, each of them reach their target and then stay there. Now we want them coming out of here, here, and here, really. Uh, th th this is a good start. So um, there is, I can't remember, I thought, I think there was, um, you could choose which one to fire from. Um, I don't know whether to do that or just that I do it so that it, it picks the closest one. Um, I think I might do it so it just picks the closest one because that involves a lot more coding um, and that might be quite fun. Oh, right, let's get started. So I'll need to figure out um, where the breakpoints are for this one um, and it's just going to be the midpoint of the two coordinates there and then the midpoint of the two coordinates for these and we only need to worry about the x coordinates because obviously these are across one horizontal plane um, therefore, we don't need to worry about the Y coordinates. Um, so, probably I'm just going to create another data store. Um, I probably could put this in another one, but this is quite a specialized one. Um, and I'm just going to call this one Midpoint Data Store. And this is just going to hold all the midpoints. Um, so, uh, midpoint one and then midpoint two. Midpoint one is the cutoff between these two ones here, and then midpoint two is the cutoff between these two here. So we actually only need two coordinates. And so we'll add that to the init and we'll say um, multiple value set midpoint one is the oh, I've forgotten actually I should read 
just count again. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's five and one. So I look into, is it this one? And we look up the values there. So I said it was five. And to find the midpoint, what you do is you add them together. So we add the x value for the first uh, gun turret and the x value for the second gun turret. So we add them together and divide by two. That's how you find a midpoint. Simples. <laughs> and we we'll do the other one, so midpoint two. Same thing, but this time it's between five and nine, wasn't it? I hope so. And we can run that and actually just check that that works. So we're just going to import that object in, which would be an active object. And it is our midpoint data store. Let's just see. Yeah, so 312, that looks about right. And 790 are our cutoffs. Now you might be thinking, well, why am I calculating this at the start? Why don't I just hard code that? It's because actually I might change my mind on um, these coordinates. Uh, these coordinates here, I might decide that actually I want it a bit to the right or a bit to the left. It just saves me having to change a whole load of values down the line. Everything's just stored all in here. And if I want to change them, that's fine. I can do it in here and update across the application. And it's quite likely I do want to change these because um, I've only roughly done this because I've not done a huge planning process for this project, <clears throat> which is not good, but you know, you can't you can't do everything. Okay, so we've got our midpoints sorted, um, and so when user clicks the left button, this is getting very very crowded, and when something gets crowded, normally um, <clears throat> instinctively I'm thinking it needs to have a loop. Um, so player fires, player fires loop, and we just do a loop of one. It just allows us just to stretch us out a bit. And as I said before, if you've got um, 2.5 plus, there's better ways of doing this. You can make it a parent and child. Um, but <clears throat> I have already said that I'm not, not going to do it that way. Um, so I want to kind of split these up a bit. So let's delete that and then delete that. Just split all this up. So I have all of this stuff in my first bit, all of this stuff in my second bit. Make sure to add one to the counter as well. Okay. Right, so we need something before that though, because we need to figure out what um, turret it's going from. Um, so I might go back in here and just say, um, well, with silo, silo to fire from. Um, leave that as a thing first and so what we'll do is we'll say um, hmm, we're comparing to the mouse and you can't actually do it in here you, all you do is you do compare two general values and we're looking at the x position of the mouse and if it's lower than um, our first break, our, our first cutoff point. So it's midpoint one. Then the um, silo to fire from is the first one. Uh, I don't know whether to call it one or zero. Let's call it one. Even though I told you not to mix up um, zero base. Now, this isn't going to be greater, it's going to be greater or equal. Make sure you cover all your bases. It's going to be greater or equal to, in fact, I might drag it from the top one, but lower than midpoint two. Then the silo is going to be number two. And finally, we just need greater than or equal to three, uh, to two, I mean. Then it's going to be silo number three. Okay. Now we've got the silos in there, but actually we could um, set the start x and start y as well. 
so we shall do that. So our triple value set. So start x is going to be if it's a uh, silo one, then we want the um, the target one x, and we want to set the start y to just the y coordinate of target one. Same thing here. to target 5 and then we have target 9 and we just do need to delete it from here otherwise it would just overwrite it Let's give that a go. Doesn't appear to be working. Because even though I've just had a massive speech about how you can't set alterable values before it's created, I've done exactly the same thing. Um, so what I might do is just drag this to the top. Um, I might... Um, change the counter bottom and so it's created um, and then I might insert um, and I might say that the player missile audible value so I might use that index uh, there's probably different ways of doing this but I'm not in the mood <laughs> to find them out um, and I need to do this bit here. So I'm just going to control X to cut that. Whoops, I keep pressing that accidentally. And paste that in here. Do the same thing again. Control X to cut it. Paste in there. Theoretically, that should work. Let's have a look. Hmm. It's restarting each time. So that tells me that I've missed one of these out, and I think I have. It's this one here. Because you need to constantly say it's just that one. The one that has an index of, I don't know, six or whatever. Let's see if it works now. Works nicely. I don't know why there's two fired. There seems to be one at zero first. Let's just check that out, why that's firing. It's normally because um, there's one created at start. So normally just say don't create it at the start. Same with this one, actually. None of these should be created at the start. Let's just run it now. Check that's fixed it. Nope. <laughs> Let's have a look on why that's happening. Hmm. Ah, it's because I've forgotten to delete this here. Always the way. So let's try it again. And yeah, that works perfectly. So all the way up to the midpoint. There we go. So you always get it from the nearest uh, missile thing. Now we've got to be careful because later on we'll need to keep in, uh, have a think about the fact that these will run out of bullets, so it can't be that anymore. And so we need to create a logic to say, oh, actually, it needs to be the next closest one, or just a different one, maybe. Um, but for now, that suits our needs. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this week of videos, and I hope you're looking forward to us finishing this off next week and having our minimum viable product, which is a game that is resembling Missile Command without any of the UFOs or airplanes or... Uh, anything like that. I might try and do the, the cluster missiles because uh, they're actually quite fun and they shouldn't be more complicated because they should just um, use this one here and what, what, what you would do is get the angle uh, which we do have here so we've got the angle, I don't know where it is, there we are 
um, and you just uh, inverse it. So whatever angle it is, so if it's going like I don't know, 45 degrees, you would just add 90 to it to make it go the other way. So you'd mirror it along the um, what the y-axis. You'd flip it, um, but <laughs> that should be quite fun to do if we've got time. And all that stuff is always fun if we've got time. Please keep your comments coming in. They're incredibly useful. Um, and yeah, <laughs> and have a nice weekend. And I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.